This video is presented by EA Game Changers. I'd like to shout out EA for giving me the opportunity to capture some exclusive Madden 21 content for all of you savages. Let's get into the video. What's going on everybody, C4 here. Welcome back to the channel and here with more Madden 21 content. It is your yearly video helping you get that huge edge in your user leagues and any franchise that you're gonna be playing pretty much. But it's more important than user leagues because you could finesse. You can, you can think outside the box and get some big time players and you can do that through position changes. So what we're gonna go through here today for Madden 21 is the top 10 player position switches for your franchise modes. Now what I'm not gonna do is make a 10 minute and one second video telling you that hey, if you take, you know, if, if you go in here and you take someone, we'll say like Tyree Kill, and you move Tyree Kill to running back, that he's gonna be a really good running back. He's already a 96 wide receiver. It just would make literally no sense whatsoever to take someone like that and just make him a running back. I mean, you could, by all means you could, but those are kind of obvious. What I want to do here in today's video is I want to do a little bit of the legwork for you. I want to get you guys some players that if you make a position switch for them, uh, it, it's going to take a good player and make him a great player. It's going to take a bubble roster guy and, and make him into something maybe have a capable starter. I'm just going to switch. Harrison Smith is another really popular one. Same with Jamal Adams. If you're moving uh, really, really high tackling safeties to the linebacker spot, if you use your linebackers, that's a really, really popular one. So there will be a couple cheesy ones, a couple familiar faces from these videos, but also every single year, there's new players, new attributes, rookies that give you a whole new pool of players, pool of opportunity to get some overpowered position switches. So not only are we gonna mix in some overpowered guys, we're gonna mix in some guys that are very legitimate trade targets that you can get in your franchise mode versus just saying, hey, flip this 92 and make him a 99. Easy. Let's do something with a little bit more challenging to it. So without further ado, we'll, we'll get one of, the, one of the ones that's here anytime we talk about these types of videos, and that is Golden Tate. Now this is important. If you are in a franchise, you're gonna be looking at this. Golden Tate's 32, 84. If you're doing a fancy job, he's, he's gonna be there mid rounds people are just gonna look at golden tate as a veteran slot wide receiver but what you could do with golden tate is move him right into running back where he goes from an 84 wide receiver to a 96 overall running back the reason why we lead off with him you might say oh c4 are you ranking these just because golden tate, i think we've done this video last two years he's always here so let's just get it out of the way golden tate is back once again he's a 96 overall it's like the mm, second highest player on this list but I just wanted to get out of the way because he's here every single time. And I didn't want to do top 10 with Golden Tate being number two or three because that's too playable. But Golden Tate, absolutely value there if you were in like a fancy draft or something like that uh, to get that little bit of a position switch before he starts to retire. Even if he regresses, he's still got to regress down. He'll be like an 88 when he's like 34. So definitely one of the best position switches every single year. Classic Golden Tate. Number nine on our list, he's a favorite player. Last year during our Raiders franchise, he was one of our better wide receivers. And that is Damian Ratley. However, he goes from a 69 wide receiver when you move him to running back up to a 72. It's not a major upgrade, but he's a good frame for running back at 6'2", 200 pounds. You're getting 93 speed, 92 acceleration. So speed is kind of a premium at the running back position here in Madden 21. You get an 84 change of direction, 76 ball carrier vision, 79 juke, 76 carry, 81 catching. The route running is very solid. So if you want a receiving back, that's not your traditional receiver. Let's be honest, receiving backs, generally speaking, are like sub 200 pounds, 200 pounds at the most, and like 5'7". If you want something with a little bit more size, Damian Ratley brings you some really, really good value. But either way, he's a guy that I can't stress enough you want to get on your team. Be it at running back, be it at wide receiver, he's one of the best underrated low rated wide receivers in madden 21 coming in at number eight we have our first rookie and that is joe reed the rookie out of virginia here on the la Chargers. he's a 67 overall wide receiver you look at that frame 6'1 224 he's known for his special team ability pretty much when you're thinking of wide receivers that you could make a position switch it always helps to think of the best return man because those skills translate to being a running back so he goes from a 67 overall wide receiver to a 73 overall running back when you compare that to the rookie class of running backs it puts them near the top you got 90 speed 89 acceleration we got 76 break tackle the change of direction is good 85 ball carrier vision 77 spin 84 juke the carrying is okay at 74 but you got the 83 catching the route running is very good 
So especially how, even if you're here in Chargers, you know, you look at that, they kind of hyped about Josh Kelly. I think there's some value there at of UCLA. But just like that, you take a guy like Joe Reed, I think he's going to be a guy that definitely, because of his age as well as a rookie, he's only 22. You make this switch early on in his career, I think you can develop it into a very, very nice running back in the NFL. Number seven on our list is your Super Bowl runners-up, the San Francisco 49ers. And we're going to take a look here at Jalen Hurd, who's a 68 overall wide receiver. He's pretty much an offensive weapon. I think you can move him to tight end and be happy. You can move him to fullback to be happy. But again, we're going to switch him to the running back spot, which is a popular theme, wide receiver to running back. And he goes from a 68 overall wide receiver to a 74 overall running back. And if you're looking for a guy that's a little bit bigger of a body, 6'4", 230 pounds, brings in 89 speed, 91 agility, 90 acceleration. You get 78 break tackle, okay trucking for a wide receiver, 84 change of direction, 85 ball carrier vision. We got 82 juke moves, 78 carry, 78 catching. He's just a big bodied wide receiver that can be, he just plays offense. He straight up plays offense. So if you want to maximize his overall Switching him from wide receiver to running back gives you some good value there. He's still young. He's only entering his second year. So there is some good value there in your fantasy leagues. And he's a guy that's definitely a bubble guy. Might be able to find him on the trade block, especially if you're hurting for a running back. Number six, we're going back to the rookies and we're staying close to home here. And we're going to Canada. And that's Chase Claypool on the Pittsburgh Steelers. 6'4", 240 pounds. He's a 70 overall wide receiver. By all means, keep him a wide receiver. He's a young playmaker, should be fine and develop nicely as a wide receiver. But if you want to maximize that and you don't need him at wide receiver, I suggest taking Chase Claypool and moving him to the tight end spot. He goes from a 70 overall rookie wide receiver to a 76 overall rookie tight end, which would be by far tops in this draft class. I think the highest overall tight end is Komet on the Bears. He's like a 71. So in that range, either way, without a doubt, he would be the top rookie tight end in the class. And he's insane. You get 90, obviously you're the blocking. You gotta, you, gotta, you know, take it relative. He's a wide receiver. But for a receiver, it's 92 speed. We get 89 acceleration. We get 78 break tackle. 83 ball carrier vision. All the stiff move, juke, all that stuff is in the 70s. You get 79 catching. The route running is solid. 84 catch in traffic. 84 spectacular catch. 95 jumping so you're getting truly a premier athlete let's get, let's do take a look here at his blocking it's it's not it's not great you got that 56 run block you know 61 impact you know it's it's nothing to write home about but if you want a height weight speed mismatch at tight end and you want a guy that's young that you can build and perhaps develop into your next franchise tight end i think chase claypool will give you a little bit more advantage with that position switch from wide receiver because again i don't like making repeat content for the sake of making repeat content we're going to another rookie entering his name to the position switch hall of fame and that is devin duvernay the rookie wide receiver out of texas on the baltimore ravens a 71 hidden dev wide receiver by all means at 22 keep him at wide receiver you want to make things a little more interesting he does get quite an uptick moving him to the running back spot goes from a 77 uh, sorry, 71 wide receiver to a 77 overall running back. Instantly, I think that's the highest rating for a running back if you're considering the rookies in this draft class. Uh, 5'11", 200 pounds, not a bad frame. Again, you got the hidden dev, so it's it helps him out just a little bit. 92 speed, 91 acceleration. You get 79 break tackle, 85 change of direction, 85 ball carrier vision. The stiff arm's not bad. Spin's not bad. 81 juke, 78 carry. 84 catching so if you're looking for a guy that can kind of do it all has some speed a rookie very high ceiling and a hidden dev trait look no further than flipping Devin Duvernay from wide receiver to the running back position coming in at number four is our final rookie on the list and that is LaVisca Chenault Jr. the rookie wide receiver out of Colorado here on the Jacksonville Jaguars now this is surprised to no one if you watch my content he is absolutely just a weapon at this point he's a 72 Wide receiver as a rookie. That's not bad. You could definitely work with that. But when you move him to running back, he goes from a 72 all the way up to a 79. Great frame at six foot one, 200 and almost 30 pounds. You're getting 88 speed, 89 acceleration, 82 break tackle, 86 change of direction, 89 ball carrier vision. The stiff arm is fine. 81 spin, 85 juke, 77 carry. You get 83 catching. The route running is pretty damn good. The jumping with 91 is out. He's just an A tier athlete. He's absolutely an A tier athlete. And I think maybe out of all the rookies, the guy that actually makes the most sense, and maybe hell, in real life, he could eventually make that position switch. LaVisca Chanel brings you all the value. And I'm, maybe as a hidden dev, can't remember from my dev trade video. Go check that out. It's already been dropped on the channel, I'm pretty sure. And if not, 
Um, no, it's definitely been dropped. Yep, go check that out. Um, LaVisca Chanel brings some really, really good value, especially when you're Jacksonville. Leonard Fournette's entering his final contract, you know, final year of his contract. If you can't pay him in your Jags rebuild, definitely consider LaVisca Chanel maybe becoming your next franchise running back. Number three on the list, kind of a tie. I, I'll say one is Ted Ginn. Ted Ginn, back in the day when he was a little bit younger, was a little bit better athlete. He was a money position switch. So we will we will highlight Ted Ginn. But ultimately, Cordero Patterson, 6'2", two, th almost 240. Bring, I mean, I, I think in real life, the Bears might be getting ready to straight up just switch him to the running back spot. But known for his returnability, uh, both these guys, you know, Ted Ginn goes, what, 75 to an 81 at 35 too. So that's maximizing your value. More so if you're like in a fantasy league and he's still there, by all means, get yourself a nice little receiving back. But Cordero Patterson, again, veteran, 29, but making that switch, he goes from, what was it, 75, 76 overall, wide receiver doing 84 overall running back. Again, the frame is ideal. You get 91 speed, 95 agility, 92 acceleration, 85 break tackle, 88 change of direction, 90 ball carrier vision, 90 spin move, 94 juke move. The carry's not great. Might fumble it a little bit. 83 catching, which actually is pretty damn high for Cordero Patterson. But I think generally speaking, I mean, it's no, it, it, it's, it's not as known as say Golden Tate is for that OP position switch, but Patterson, uh, I think that's, you know, pretty automatic. I think if I'm doing even a Bears rebuild, automatically, I'm probably going to make him my starting running back. Coming in at number 200 list, it's not moving Christian McCaffrey to wide receiver, which you probably could if you just wanted to get weird, but we're going to be looking at Curtis Samuel. Now, if you are doing a Panthers franchise, a Panthers rebuild, you're probably not going to want to look to find a way to get more competition behind Christian McCaffrey. But maybe if McCaffrey gets hurt and you're in a pinch, this move will help you out. But Curtis Samuel goes from an 80 overall wide receiver up to an 88 overall running back, which is, that's awesome. What do you want this awesome? 95 speed, 93 acceleration, 87 change of direction, 85 ball carrier vision, 86 juke move, 84, I mean the 74 carry, it is what it is. But all the, all the route running and all that stuff is in the 80s. Now, reason why he comes in at number two, every year in Madden, Madden 20, 19, 18, there's always those same guys that are always free agents. No matter what, they're there almost every single year. I feel like Curtis Samuel's gonna be that guy this year. He's gonna be that guy that's there 70, 80% of the time, he's gonna be one of the top young players at the skill position that you can try to land in your Madden 21 franchise modes. So if you're hurting at that running back spot, because running backs few and far between with free agency, you can usually get running backs when they hit free agency past their expiration date. If you already are loaded at wide receiver, you need a running back, you're hurting for a running back, I think Curtis Samuel is going to be available in free agency more often than not year one, year two. Not sure when his contract exactly runs out. It's soon. And then be able to move him like that into a running back spot. He'll be 25, 26, and 88 overall. You have a chance for him to develop into a franchise running back. So that is why he's here at number two. And at number one, if you're talking about position switches, it's all about who technically will always be the most overpowered. And it wasn't Golden Tate. We're gonna be looking at Tyler Lockett. This is one where it's definitely more open to the fan, you know, the fantasy drafts, all those stuff. Not, not so much. I don't think if you're gonna be playing as the Seattle Seahawks, looking at that wide receiver room, you're not gonna not want Tyler Lockett at wide receiver. However, if you want to get weird, he's an 88 overall wide receiver. But you move him to the running back spot, you know, less so than say someone super obvious like Tyreek Hill and stuff like that. You take an 88 overall, a guy that's firmly outside the top 10 wide receivers, and you move him to running back and he's a 99. There's no way if I'm doing a video like this, I'm not going to give you the guy that's 99 that's super freaky. Because obviously if you make him a 99 overall running back, he's going to be, well obviously because we have Tyreek here, He's going to be the best running back in the game, tied with Christian McCaffrey, a member of the 99 club. So you'd look at a guy, if you're doing a fantasy draft, you're in round 7, 8, 9, 10, somewhere in that range. Lockett's still there, but you know all these other running backs are clearly gone. People are picking the Saquons. People are picking uh, the, the, the Chubbs, the Derrick Henrys. And you're like, oh, man, I missed my running back. You, you can load up a wide out and then still be able to get Tyler Lockett and then just flipping a running back and instantly have the best running back in football. So because he's a 99, because there is immense value here in this position switch, if you are in a franchise that has fantasy drafts, that's why we're pigeonholing Tyler Lockett here at number one on our top 10 Madden 21 positional switches. So that does it for me here today, guys. Is there anyone that I missed out? I mean, guys that you've seen in Madden 18, 19, and 20 that are still in the game that were overpowered that didn't make this list, Hey, they're still probably overpowered, but I did want to try to more so focus on players that are new to the game, so I'm not just rehashing old information, but you did see a couple familiar guys, you know, the Cordero Pattersons, the Golden Tates, and the Tyler Lockett. 
So I hope you guys did enjoy this video. As always, if it's your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. On our way to 150,000, I'd like to hit that sooner than later. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. Maybe we get a thousand likes on the Madden 21 content. Make me feel good about myself. Get the morale high here at all C4's crib. But that'll do it for me today, guys. Thank you for watching. We'll be back tomorrow with more Madden 21 content. And until then, peace out.